Division property of inequality, case two. This is the case where we're given the value of c is less than zero. Now this is the trickier case because we've really got to pay attention to what's happening here. We've got to know how inequalities work. So in this case, what this says is if I'm given that a is less than b, and I'm still given the fact that C is less than zero. So I've got a negative number now. Then once I divide, the inequality will change direction. So that's if I multiply or divide by a negative number, the inequality changes direction. Okay, so we've got to be really careful with these ones. So let's take a look at what the problem might look like. Let's say I give you one that says solve, and we do negative 2x less than 12. Okay, we find, just like we did before, we find our c value, this front number, and we say, is this greater than 0? So that's really our question is, does that actually work? And in this case, it's no, which means we need to use case two. Okay, we're relying on case two now. So if I divide by negative two on both sides, division works the same way, this will still reduce, same number will reduce. But here's where the problem happens. This is where we gotta be careful. This now will change directions. And this will still give me whatever I get. So positive divided by negative will be negative, And 12 divided by 2, which would be 6. So my answer is really x is greater than negative 6. So be careful with that negative. Let's try another one so you can see how this works. Solve negative 4. And again, any one of these inequality signs can work. So let's say it's a greater than or equal to, oops, negative 4, x, greater than or equal to 28. All right, so we identify the c. Here's our c value. Is that greater than 0? This would be no, so that means we're going to go back to the case 2 idea, right? And so here's what happens. We divide by the negative 4. We divide by the negative 4. Same rules, same property. You still reduce, so it leaves me x. What happens here? Well, again, be careful because we divided. This will now change to look like this. The inequality changes direction. And now this one basically becomes negative 7. And there's our thing. So basically the way that I try and explain this a lot of times is if the number in the front, I'm going to just rewrite this so we could look at it one more time. If the end result is that this is going to go from a negative to a positive, so the negative sign here is going to become a positive sign in our final answer, then that means this sign changes, this sign changes, and that sign changes. So let's look at what that means. Let's look at it one more time. Okay, I'm going to look at the exact same problem, but we're going to look at it one more time slowly. Okay, so we'll look at this type of a problem. Okay, so this is a negative number. This is a less than, and that's a positive. So negative, a less than, or equal to and this is a positive. Now, when I go to divide, I'm going to divide this by negative 4. I'm going to divide this by negative 4. So what does that do to this answer? Well, this turns it into a positive x. Okay, so now it's changed. This turned into a negative 7. So this sign changed. That means that this middle one has to change as well. So instead of it being less than, now it's going to be greater than. So if one sign changes with this when we're dividing or multiplying, that's the key, 
then that means all the signs change. And that's how this property for case number two works.